WCNC Charlotte. This is Flashpoint. Thanks for joining us here on Flashpoint. I'm Ben Thompson. We are now just over two weeks away from the midterm elections. And here in North Carolina, one of the biggest races is the battle for U.S. Senate. It could decide who's in power on Capitol Hill. Republican Congressman Ted Budd taking on former Chief Justice Sherry Beasley. And folks, this is a tight race. Over the past seven months, polls have had both Bud and Beasley in the lead at different times. And now the Republican candidate taking a slight lead. But it's close enough where Beasley could pull out a win. We spoke with both candidates in the last week. We talked about just about everything. Crime, inflation, abortion, the state of democracy. First up, former North Carolina Chief Justice Sherry Beasley. Poll after poll says that inflation and the economy are the number one issues for voters right now. Democrats have been in control in D.C. the last couple of years. Why should voters not blame Democrats for the current economic situation? You know, Ben, everywhere I travel across our 100 counties in the ninth largest state in the nation, folks are very concerned about rising costs, everything from pain at the pump to the cost of prescription drugs and everything in between. And they want to know that when I make it to the Senate, I'm going to fight hard to, to lower costs. I think we also have to think about the fact that we have never been in a place like we have before where we, during the pan pandemic, really shut down our economy. And the greatest driver really is our supply chain. But we also know that um, there are things that Congress really can do. We uh, pay more for prescription medications than any other country in the world. And Congress can stop that. And we also know that corporations are making 70 year record profits under the cover of inflation. And so they're jacking up prices on the things that we need. And Congress can stop that. You know, my opponent, Congressman Ted Budd, has voted on, on, on against lowering prescription drug prices uh, while taking corporate PAC money from Big Pharma uh, and voted against uh, lowering costs on the things that we need and is always uh, voting in favor of corporations and special interests on his own and not the interests of North Carolinians. Um, some folks have said the American Rescue Plan went too far and actually helped create the inflationary situation we're in. Do you think that's the case? Well, what I know is that this was a very difficult time for our country. Uh, and I know that right now people want to know how we get out of this. And they want to know that I'll be there to fight to make sure that that happens for North Carolinians. When, when in the greatest country in the world, folks are having to make choices around buying groceries or school supplies or high priced medications, I'm prepared to fight in the Senate to make sure that people can get some relief. It seems like we can do better, regardless we if you're Democrat better. or Republican, we can do better than that for well, sure. Well, it's not a partisan issue. Yeah. It really isn't. Everybody is feeling uh, the pressure around high prices, and it is not right. Congress must act and must have the courage to act. Let's talk about abortion. Uh, you support the Roe v. Wade framework. Um, are there any restrictions that you would like to see in place when it comes to abortion? Uh, Ted Budd, you mentioned him, says you basically support abortion on demand. I know he does. Uh, he's an alarmist. And the problem is he's leading the charge with the most extreme faction of his party on an absolute ban on abortion without exceptions for rape, incest, or risk to a mother's health. And if he gets his way, it means that a woman who has been sexually assaulted will be forced to carry a pregnancy to term. For a woman who has a septic uterus or a, a miscarriage that her body won't release or an ectopic pregnancy, the life-saving treatment for that woman is an abortion. And if women don't have access to an abortion, they will die. That's unacceptable. I support the framework as outlined in Roe, which provides for uh, protections and restrictions on abortion in late-term pregnancies so that abortions don't happen unless there is something seriously happening like the risk to a mother's health. That's reasonable, and that's been the law for nearly 50 years, the constitutionally protected law for nearly 50 years. And the reality is, the question is, who makes the decision? Is it a woman and her physician, or is it politicians up in Washington? And, and, and Congressman Butt has to understand that in an exam room with a woman and her doctor, there is no place for him for that decision to be made. You've criticized him for not certifying the 2020 election results. Um, do you think if he goes into the Senate, he is a threat to democracy? On January 6th, he called the mob that stormed and rioted to the Capitol that injured hundreds of police officers, many of whom were beaten by the American flag, just patriots standing up. This is our country. And even after all of that violence, 
yeah, he refused to certify the election and called them just patriots standing up. And there was legislation proposed to secure and protect future elections, which he voted against. And even when pressed about whether or not he will accept the results of this race, he's reticent to say yes. We need someone who believes in democracy, who believes in, in our country, and who believes in safety. I mean, someone who not only is an election denier and, and touts the violence that happened at the Capitol on January 6th, but fails to vote for funding for law enforcement for our police officers here in North Carolina. He's done so on four separate occasions. He's been in Congress for six years, and knowing that we have an opioid crisis here, he's voted against helping law enforcement officers fight for that. He's going to be one who's going to attack my record, but he does so because he cannot defend his own. Uh, North Carolina, one of the latest scenes uh, of a mass shooting here in the United States it happens hundreds of times over the course of this year. In Raleigh, a little over a week ago, five people um, killed. A lot we still don't know about this, uh, but what can we do about these, these mass shootings? You know, this is just heartbreaking, and uh, this has been really difficult for uh, our community in Raleigh, and, and my heart and my thoughts and prayers certainly go out to these families and to our communities. Uh, I, I also know that we've got to work uh, in tandem with law enforcement officers to keep our communities safe. Um, you know, I've been a judge for over two decades and served as Chief Justice of the Supreme Court of North Carolina. I've worked with law enforcement. I've held violent offenders accountable. I created the first human trafficking court here in North Carolina. And what I know is that we have to make sure that law enforcement officers have funding so that they have the resources to keep themselves and our community safe. And I also know that we have to invest in, in community-based violence prevention programs so that we are stopping the silent cycle of violence. But we also cannot be afraid to talk about gun safety. And Congressman Bud voted against bipartisan legislation on gun safety and mental health for children that was supported by Senators Burr and Tillis and law enforcement in North Carolina. Well, we need to be responsible folks. We've got to make sure that we are in consultation with public safety officials and with law enforcement so that we're creating legislation that works for folks here in North Carolina. We need universal background checks. We need red flag laws. And we need to make sure that we are eliminating these ghost guns. I mean, we've got to commit to keeping folks safe. I think the, the Senate has an obligation to do that. Congress and Bud is one of the, he is the number one rated elected official at, uh, a candidate in this election cycle by the NRA. I mean, we, he is a gun shop and firing range owner. Nothing wrong with that. I come from a family that hunts as a part of our culture and tradition here in North Carolina. But he also is profiting from what's called murder insurance, which defends uh, domestic abu abusers from crimes up to murder. You can't do that and then be committed to, to, to public safety and criminals cr preventing crime on the other hand. Uh, people want to want effective governance and they want to see that people can actually work together regardless of what the outcome might be. Um, name a Republican that you respect. Oh gosh, I uh, respect Senator Tillis. I mean, he lives here in North Carolina and he understands our culture around veterans and farms and, um, and I would very much look forward to working with him. I was very disappointed that, that Congressman Bud voted against this bipartisan legislation on gun safety, which our uh, senators supported. A few rapid fire, but fun sure. questions. North Carolina mountains or beach? Mm. Which one? If I had to choose the beach. Okay, but that's fair. There are no right or wrong answers I know, here. But they're so awesome. um, favorite North Carolina fast food chain? You got Bojangles, you got Krispy Kreme, you got Cookout. I'm going to say Krispy Kreme. Oh, one thing you agree with Ted Butt on. How about that? My kids would say Cookout. <laughs> um, in your mind, is there a best spot, a best barbecue joint in North Carolina? Ooh, now you know we got Eastern. Yeah, oh, yeah we, of course. And we have Western. I just love barbecue, it's great. It's hard Good to go stuff. wrong. Sherry Beasley, thank you so much. We appreciate, appreciate it. Ben. Thank you. All right, more flashpoint after this.